Right, uh, we've got two non-zero distinct real numbers, A and B, and we're asked to show that if they're both non-negative or both less than or equal to zero, then the equation x over x minus a plus x over x minus b equal to 1 has exactly two real solutions. OK, uh, I don't like that I've got uh, terms in terms of x in the denominator, so I'm going to multiply up to get rid of those. So multiplying by x minus a, x minus b, that's going to give me x times x minus b from this term plus x times x minus a from the second term, all equal to x minus a, x minus b. And I can kind of see that I'm going to end up with a quadratic out of this. So let's just multiply things out and rearrange. So x squared take bx plus x squared take ax is equal to x squared take ax take bx plus ab. OK, and if we gather everything together, I'm going to get 1x squared term, and I'm going to get minus bx minus ax plus ax minus plus bx. So I'm going to end up with x squared minus ab is equal to 0. So that means I have solutions exactly when x is equal to plus or minus the square root of AB. Now, because A and B are either both non-negative or both less than or equal to zero, and actually I've got that they're, they're different from zero, is given in the question, so I can actually say this, then what I have here is a positive number inside my square root, so I can take a square root, that's good, and also I get two distinct solutions depending on whether it's positive or negative. And I should just quickly check that that doesn't mean that I divide through by 0 here. And actually, that's going to be fine, because a and b are different. So the root of a and b, a, b is never going to be equal to a or b. OK, uh, now we're asked if we've got uh, another real number C, which we're just told can't be 1, and we've still got AB distinct non-zero real numbers, then this new equation where it looks like what we had before, but instead we've added a C to the other side, uh, if C squared satisfies this equation, if it's minus 4B over A minus B squared, then we've got exactly one real solution. Um, this looks kind of a little bit messy to just plug in. So I'm going to leave C there as it is for now, and I'll work through and see when I should get one real solution, and then I'll verify that it's, that it's in this case. So again, multiplying up as we did before and aiming for a quadratic, because quadratics are things we know how to solve. I can get OK, and I'm going to multiply this out again. So I've got 2x squared on this side. I've got minus bx minus ax. And that's all equal to, I've got 1 plus cx squared on this side. And I've got minus a plus b, uh, 1 plus cx plus AB times 1 plus C. OK, and I'd like to know when this has only got one real solution. So to get it, let's get it as a quadratic all on one side. So that's 2 minus 1 plus C, which is 1 minus C, x squared. And then I'm going to have plus A plus B. OK, well, I would have 1 plus c, only I'm taking off 1, so I'm just going to have a c there. And I want to take off a, b. 1 plus c equals 0. OK, uh, I don't much fancy factorising that, so I'm going to try and use the quadratic formula. So the solutions to this are x 
equal to, well, uh, minus a plus b, c plus minus the square root of this squared, which is a plus b squared c squared plus 4, 1 minus c, a, b, 1 plus c. And that's going to be all over 2, 1 minus c. OK, and there's going to only be one solution if actually what I'm uh, adding on or taking off here is equal to 0. So now I just need to check when uh, this term is equal to 0. So um, this has got exactly one solution when the bit in the square root is all equal to 0. So let's see when that happens. It's when a plus b squared c squared plus 4, 1 minus c, a, b, 1 plus c is all equal to 0. OK, and I know that I'm looking for a condition on c squared. I know that I want c squared to be equal to a minus 4ab over a minus b squared. So let's have a look what happens here. This is a difference of squares here, so I can get that in terms of c squared as well. I've got c squared, a plus b, all squared, plus 4, 1 minus c squared, ab is equal to 0. Uh, so that gives me that c squared, I think, a plus b all squared from there, and also a minus 4ab from there, uh, minus, sorry, plus 4ab is all equal to 0. And that happens divide through by this term. I'm looking for a plus b squared minus 4ab, but I know that if I expand that out, I'll get a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. So when I take off 4ab, I'll get minus 2ab, which would be the term that I got if I did a minus b all squared. And actually, that's what I was asked to show. I just need to check that, uh, although I've shown that if this only has one real solution, then c squared is equal to this. I need to check that if c squared is equal to this, then I only have one real solution. But that's going to be fine, because when c squared has this property, this was all entirely reversible, and that is going to be equal to 0. So that's all that I need to check. So now we're asked to show that what we had before was equivalent to c squared being equal to 1 minus a plus b over a minus b all squared. Now, because this is expressed as a difference of two expressions and what we had before was just sort of all one expression, I'm going to work with this one and expand it out because it's slightly more complicated and it's easier to go from something complicated to something simple than it is to try and figure out how to make your simple thing more complicated, which you can do in many ways. So let's get this in, all in terms of one fraction. So this is a minus b all squared minus a plus b all squared over a minus b squared. And that's what I had on my denominator before, so that's good. And this is equal to, well, I'm going to have an a squared take 2ab plus b squared. And I can see I'm going to get some cancellation here because I'm going to get a minus a squared and then I'm going to get another minus 2ab and I'm going to get a minus b squared. So these cancel. So. so I've actually shown that these expressions are always equal to each other. So if c squared is equal to this, then that's exactly when it's equal to this. OK, so now I'm asked to show that naught is less than c squared is less than or equal to 1. OK, well, c squared is a square of a real number, and we know what quadratic x squared looks like. That's going through the origin there. It never takes negative values, so 
I know that it's always at least zero. Why is it non-zero? Uh, well, if I look, I can't really tell anything from this expression about whether or not it's zero. But if I look at this one, if c squared is zero, then 4ab must be zero. But a and b are non-zero. So ab is non-zero. So c squared is non-zero. And why is it at most 1? Well, if I look at this expression now, which is more useful, I've got 1 minus the square of a real number. And as we just said, uh, squares of real numbers are always positive. So if I subtract off a positive quantity from 1, I must end up with something less than 1. So a plus b over a minus b squared greater than or equal to 0 implies that c squared is less than or equal to 1 which is exactly what we wanted to check.